Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back for another video of Project Irrationality. If everything works out, we will finish this build today. I'm not going to promise anything because it's very likely that's not going to work out because it typically takes more time that, uh, than we think. Yesterday we already wanted to sh start shooting on this video but um, we had another delay because I spent three or four hours just hiding the cables of all fans and also some RGB stuff. We have nine Corsair fans in total which means that we have 18 cables I had to hide. On the original in-win fans they're directly connected to each other so just hooked up. Um, serial that means we only have one cable for three fans. Here we have three cables or six cables for uh, three fans therefore makes it a lot, a lot more complicated but I wanted to have it really really nice and clean that's why I hit all the cables in between the radiators basically between the radiator and the aluminium shroud right here moved it back to the, fr uh, to the front and hit it in the front itself so that took three or four hours but I have a ton of stuff on my table which we are going to work on today. We will start with the main SSD which I will use for Windows and also all my tools and programs I'm going to use. Uh, so far we only discussed the U.2 SSDs which will be used to store all my videos and uh, will be used as a database but for Windows I'm going to use a Corsair MP510. The Corsair MP510 is a quite cheap option in my opinion that's why I picked it. Uh, 1.9 terabyte. Uh, 3500 megabyte per second read, 2700 megabyte per second write, about 300 euro here in Germany. That's why I went for this SSD as a main option. I think we also forgot to update the counter when it comes to the costs. So Mary will have to update that. We'll have to add all the water cooling components we missed from the last video. We're going to mount this SSD on a DIM.2 module. The DIM.2 module will be mounted on the left side of the mainboard because this um, DIM.2 module is sharing the PCI Express lanes with the second PCI Express slot which is already sharing lanes with one of the U.2 slot so this slot is gone anyway but if we would use the right side we would also lose I think the third or the fourth slot which is something I want to avoid not sure yet if I will need the third or fourth slot later. To round things up visually we will also add the second DIM.2 module on the right side. It will stay empty but I think it just looks nicer to also add this one but it doesn't contain any uh, SSDs that's why we will not lose any PCI Express modules just plugging it in. The DIMDA 2 module is also working as a heatsink. We have this thermal pad inside. I also still have to remove the sticker on here. Talking about stickers, the MP510 also has this sticker on here, which is really just a sticker. It's not like a heatsink. Um, therefore, it will prevent perfect um, heat transfer to the heatsink. We will peel off this sticker as well. The right module which is empty, we go inside here, you can already also see the RGB cable that goes to the water block. And here the module with the SSD. Talking about SSD, a quick word on this 960 EVO with 1TB which was mounted in my system that we built one year ago. Unfortunately this SSD is not alive anymore. Same goes to an Intel Optane SSD that I was using in combination with an HDD. I just want to highlight that it doesn't really matter what kind of, what kind of SSD or product you're using in general. They all have a certain failure rate. All of them can fail. It doesn't matter if you take a Corsair, if you take a Samsung, if you take an Intel. And there's always a chance of an SSD failing and unfortunately I lost some data on those drives which was really really annoying especially on the Optane drive which was attached to my HDD. Technically it was a very very nice solution because it really speeds up the HDD quite a lot but when this one was gone I lost uh, quite some data from uh, the Samsung drive and I also lost some data in the combination of the Optane and the HDD which was really annoying and that's one of the main reasons why I went with the U.2 drives and have them running in RAID 1. So if one of them fails I will just buy the exact same model again. 
Moving on with the water cooling itself, I already prepared an acrylic plate which was also laser cut. This acrylic plate will be moved on the right side here. It already contains mounting holes for a reservoir and pump combination which we're going to assemble in a second. It also contains cutouts for cables for U.2, for the 24 pin, uh, also for some fan cables here on the top. It also has a hole in here which we will use to have one of the glass tubes going through to the back to be attached to the top radiator. The pump will be an EK D5 and I will mount this one in a heat killer tube from Watercool and this is kind of a special version as well which I ordered directly from the Watercool website because I couldn't find this specific version anywhere else. We have the mount on the bottom where the D5 pump goes and in the normal version the heat killer tube has this as an inlet and outlet and the top cover can basically be removed for filling the reservoir. That's the normal version of the heat killer tube. This one is a little bit special because it doesn't have this rotary cover on top. This one is completely fixed and we can use either of those for inlet um, to go back from the radiator inside the heat killer tube. We will use the uh, left side obviously or from your side the right side uh, which contains the glass tube that goes inside the tube and the other hole will be used for filling the tube. You can also see the mounting gear on the back side of the tube basically those two clamps that are already attached. I had to remove the top part to be able to attach those two clamps and usually those two clamps are making the connection with I don't know your wall of the case or whatever over those uh, rubber connections and they're used for noise dampering um, for the vibrations of the pump and everything. Unfortunately I forgot those when I was measuring the distro plate. That's why I cannot use them. Means I hope that the vibrations won't be transferred so much from the tube to the case. We will see how this works out in the end. But first of all, let's mount the pump. Pump reservoir combo is ready to go, but before we can mount this one inside the case, we first have to finish the distro plate because this would be in the way of the pump. And uh, the distro plate already contains an RGB strip in the back. That's something I added yesterday already. And now we will add an additional cable cover. That's an idea that came from somebody from you from the comments. Unfortunately, I cannot remember who exactly made the comment, but if you will see this, you will certainly remember that it was your idea. Basically, we have the VGA in here, which you know has the cables soldered to on the back and the cables are meant to go through the distro plate in the bottom of the case to kind of be hidden inside there. And we have a small gap between the VGA and the distro plate where the cables would be visible. Some people said maybe add some cable comps in there, but I think the much smarter idea would just be to add an additional ac acrylic cover in there. So we have those four small acrylic parts which we will glue together to build a small nice acrylic shield which will hide all the cables. Yeah, I think I failed once again at measurement. Luckily I have a Dremel. Cable cover finally fits and while I'm already using the Dremel anyway, I will also do something else I plan to do. We have this drive bay right here, which goes into the bottom of the case. And this is the area where the cables from the GPU and also all the cables of the mainboard, so USB, all the fan headers, everything has to be routed through here and leaving this out like just not use this will make it look a little bit strange because then we will have a hole inside here. Then first I thought I would just make cutouts um, like right here for the GPU and here for the cables. But considering that this is quite thick aluminium, it will make it uh, quite complicated. That's why I will just cut off the front part completely, mount this front part onto the case 
and just have the hole right here, which I think should look quite nice and we will have suitable space for the cables. We made some good progress meanwhile. You can see we attached most of the cables. So everything that's kind of case related, uh, front panel stuff is attached to the case. All the fans are attached, temperature sensor, um, also U.2 drives, USB 3, everything like that is attached. We also connected the cables for the PSU, so the 24 pin connector and also two times six pin on the top and two times eight pin EPS on the top I bought two of those cable kits I had to buy two not because of the fact that this thing has two 24 pin connectors because you can see we're only using one because we're only using one PSU but this mainboard has so many power connectors for CPU power delivery that I had to buy two of them because we need two times six pin and two times EPS actually it has four times EPS but I'm only using two of them which is really enough for power delivery of this CPU talking about the CPU I saw some rumors online that there is a Xeon W3375X coming, which is basically double this CPU. It comes with 56 cores, 5.1 GHz base frequency, 665 Watt TDP. Not sure if this is really true or if it's just a rumor. I only found a little bit of details on some Chinese websites, so I'm not sure how reliable this information is, but could be very interesting. And if this CPU really comes to the market, I think we will upgrade this machine. This is the chaos on the backside. It's not actually that bad. We can see all those cables are for power delivery. This is because the PSU is still missing. The PSU will be an RG Thor 1200 watt PSU. This one is manufactured by Seasonic, very high quality. Used this several times before and 1200 watt should also be sufficient. As long as we use the 28 core CPU, because I think with OC, should be something with 600 watt peak on this CPU and considering that the GPU will draw about 250 to, to 300 watt should be safe with this PSU. As I said before, if we move over to the 56 core CPU later, if this CPU will ever be available, might be a little bit difficult with this one, but we will see uh, how this goes and if this CPU will ever be available. Cable management wise on the right side, for, exa for example, you can see how I managed the cable management of the top three fans. The RGB is connected to one of those Corsair connection things, not sure how this is called. And um, here we have all the adapters for the fan connection and then we have only two cables leaving on the bottom. Everything else for six additional fans is in the left side hidden in this small shield and everything else you can see on the table right here uh, is just power delivery for the PSU. That's why we'll have to um, attach the PSU now into the case and then 
spend some time on the cable management. Between this 90 degree fitting and the two EK fittings we have an aqua computer temperature sensor and this will go on the back side of the case connecting basically mainboard and the top radiator. I also made some good progress in learning how to cut those glass tubes properly. From my personal opinion the glass tube cutter which we made ourselves is still the best way. The only thing that I had to learn is not to cut uh, 360 degrees more like 270 degrees is pretty good use a little bit of oil only scratch it slightly and the movement is also quite important um, the movement has to be not only break it but break and pull apart and that's pretty much it This is the result, very even cut, very happy with that. Also the edge looks good with the torch and that's exactly how I will perform the rest of the tubes. You can see there's some certain progress in the cable management and I'm just working on the tube that goes on the top left right here. You would think this bend is kind of easy because it's just 90 degree angle but you can see there's a ton of very tiny pieces, very very sharp pieces of glass on my table right there because this bend here just completely fell apart, not really sure why. I pushed this part into the fitting and it completely broke apart. And this is a side I've been not working on. This is a side that came from Alpha Cool stock. Not really sure what happened here and why it went into a thousand very sharp pieces of glass that I have to clean now. Unfortunately again on this tube it also happened again. You can see it cracked inside and I really used almost no force to push the tube inside the fitting but it's still cracked, not really sure why. Unfortunately, we will have to end this part of project irrationality at this point because I simply ran out of glass tubes. I think I wasted six or seven pieces just on the tubing for the VGA. It's so extremely difficult, I don't really know why, but I just finished the tube, I cut them into length, which works kind of fine right now, and then do the chamfering or just um, the, use the torch to make the edge a lot smoother to prevent the o-ring from being cut. Then push them into the fitting and they immediately break those tubes. But I almost use no force, like much less force than with any acrylic tubing I was using before. And they still always break, I'm not really sure why. But I will order new tubes and then we will continue with this. Maybe the torch is causing some kind of tension inside the glass and therefore it breaks extremely easily. Maybe I have to do some kind of tempering that I put them in the oven at, I don't know, 200 degrees Celsius for a day. Not really sure if you have any ideas, feel free to leave them down below. See you next time when we will finish this machine.